Hi, my name is Jonathan. I'm a graphic designer in the San Francisco Bay Area, and I want to show you guys today how to create an environmental graphic. These are great for any projects that you guys are working on. I actually use this one here for a project that I was working on recently for school. It was an it, it's an exhibition campaign. So the exhibition was Space Exploration Destination Moon. It's by the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum here in the United States. And so pretty much what I had to do for this project is I had to create a whole bunch of different campaign materials for this exhibition. So there was things from like brochures to environmental graphics like this one to print ads for newspapers to web ads for websites. I even designed their website as well. So there's lots of different things that go into your different design projects. And environmental graphics are always an, a nice touch to any project just because they look cool. It's always nice when you take a project or your design and you apply it to the physical world. And it, it looks really nice, guys. So uh, what I wanted to show you guys to do is how to actually recreate this one here. So I'm just going to exit out of this window and then go to my Photoshop document. And so this is what the image looked like in the beginning. So it was just a blank, a blank image. Um, with this just with this wall right here. So what I want to do is I want to take my design and apply it to this wall here. So I'm going to just activate my design here. So this is my design. Um, I'm actually going to delete a little bit off the bottom because it's a little large. All right. So yep, this is my design and I want to apply it to this bottom or I'm sorry, this this plane right here. So first of all, what I need to do is I need to go ahead and mask out this plane um, in a separate layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and hide my design really quick. I'm going to duplicate the background image just by doing Command J or Control J if you're on a Mac or if you're on a PC rather. And now I'm just going to go ahead here and with my pen tool I'm just going to outline this area. So I'm going to just go from all the different corners. On the bottom it doesn't really matter because it's outside of the image you're not going to see it. So. We're going to go from there to here and then just wrap it up here on the corner and then, then we're done. All right. So now we're just going to go ahead and right click and then click make selection, click OK, and then we're going to zoom out a little bit. And now what I want to do is I want to reverse the selection. So I'm going to go on a, P, on a Mac, I'm going to go Command Shift I. And so what that does is it reverses the selection. So anytime I say Command, if any of you are using a PC, just replace that with Control. So it would be Control Shift I. So now we've we've selected everything except that plane. And now I'm going to click Add Mask, which is this little rectangle um, with a circle and a button. And so now what we've done is if I go ahead and disable the first, or let's see, let's name these. Let's do Background, and then we'll name this one Mask. So if I disable the background layer, now what we have is we just have this mask of everything except where we're going to put the design. And what this does is it just kind of sandwiches the design in the middle. So what I've just done now is I've just go ahead and brought my design layer and I brought it in between the mask and the background layer. So you always want the mask on top. What this does is when I eventually, when I bring this design here, let's go ahead and activate all layers. When I bring this design here, it's only going to show where I want it to show. It's, it's pretty much like a way for me to color in between the lines, if that makes any sense. So now, even if when I distort this image to make it look like it belongs and it was pasted onto this wall, when I distort it, and I don't just if I don't distort it perfectly, it's going to be okay because th that mask layer will hide anything that goes outside of the lines. So this is just a nice way for me to keep my work tidy, for me just to make sure I don't make any mistakes, because I've definitely done things before. I printed it out, brought it to class, and I realized there was a mistake. So this is just a way to make sure that I don't have any mistakes. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this design layer and I'm just going to hit Command T. And what this does is it allows me to transform the image. And what I want to do is I want to control these corners. But if I try to move the corners right now, you can kind of see it's doing this thing. And that's because I'm not holding down Command while I'm changing it. So if I hit the Command button and then try to move the corner, then I can distort the image and I can warp it. So I just want to bring all these different corners to the corners of this square that I've created or rectangle rather. So you want to just go ahead and just do this with every corner. It's going to look weird while you're doing it, but don't worry at the end, it'll look fine. And we'll bring this one down here. 
And for this one, since you can't see the corner of the work, you just want to line up the lines to the right and then on the, the bottom of it to fit that area. So you can see if I kind of move it up a little bit, then it's peeking out. So this looks right about right there. And next, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and fix this top corner a little bit. That's fine there. And it's okay if it's extending to the left. And that's only because this this image was cropped. So this design isn't only going to be right here because you can kind of see this wall is extending past this area right down here. So it's okay if the design goes out because it's going to be, you want it to look realistic. That's the whole point of this. But then also on this left-hand side, you want the lines to be straight because um, we're only warping it to go down at an angle. So if we did it that, then it would be off. So um, to me, this looks right here. Actually, I'm going to bring this one corner down a little bit. There we go. And then just bring this one up a tad to match. All right, so that looks good. Um, this looks good to me. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit enter. And there we go. And then if I didn't have this mask layer, just look at it. It might not be that big of a difference, but it's going to make uh, a big difference at the end. So yeah, it looks it's pretty similar. Um, there's not a huge difference, but when we do overlay it, so that's going to be the next step is we're going to change the blend mode to overlay. And what that allows it to do is you can just see that huge difference. So you go from here, you go from your normal design like that, and then you go to overlay. And what that does is it allows it to blend in with the materials in the background because that's one of two things that you want to look out for in, in environmental graphics is one, you want to make sure that it blends in with the material and we're doing that by setting it to overlay. And all that's allowing it to do is allowing you to see the concrete through it. You can see the lines of the different slabs of concrete and that just makes it sit in the environment more and makes it look more realistic. And then next is we want to look on the lighting. Um, the lighting actually doesn't look that bad by setting it to overlay. It did take in some of the effects of the lighting of the actual image. So that's good. But I just want to take it a little step further, make it a little bit more, more realistic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on my design layer and we're going to add a gradient overlay. Um, so we're just going to make sure that it's just the regular black and white gradient. We want to just double check that the black is on the right side. So it does look like it is because the bottom of the image is lighter. And so I want to make sure that it's darker up here on the top of the image up here because it's underneath this, this second story and that's going to create some sort of a shadow on it because down here you can see this huge, this huge window here that's putting light onto this image. So it's going to be darker over here. So um, I think it's actually already similar to what I had before. So you just want to make sure that the, the gradient is going from the top to the bottom and the top is going to be black and the bottom is going to be white. And you also want to make sure this is set to overlay and keeping it around 30% is fine. If I take it all the way up to 100%, it's going to be way too much. And that's just going to overexpose my image. So you just want to, ha you want to play with it. You want to just v look at it visually and see what looks right. And so I think like right around 30, 34%, that's fine. We're going to click OK. And that's pretty much it. Um, if you want, you can go through and just add additional shadows um, if you'd like. And you could just do that by adding a new layer, um, setting it to a clipping mask above that layer. And so all that's going to do is make sure that your design doesn't go anywhere else beside that one layer. And then you can just take your brush tool and then just add some black um, and then set this to multiply. And with that, it just adds another layer of shadows. It doesn't make that big of a difference, but if, if it means that much to you, you can. Because like when I disable it, you don't even really notice it that much. Um, so that's if you want to take it a little step further, but I think that looks fine. Uh, when you print it out, a lot of the close-up mistakes uh, you won't even really notice um, if there are any. Like if I if I really zoom in, you can kind of see how the wall ends like a millimeter before my design does, and that's fine. It doesn't make that big of a difference. Like when you're zoomed out, it, you can't really see it. But anyways, that's how you make an environmental graphic. If you guys want any more tutorials on anything else, let me know. Hopefully I didn't drag this one out too long and hopefully you guys followed along pretty easily. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and leave your question down in the comment section below. Um, I'd be happy to answer it. And I'll, in the description of this video, I'll actually leave um, a link to my portfolio where I show my full project on this if you guys are curious on that as well. So anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. My name is Jonathan and have a great day.